Okay, good evening and welcome to IJ Forums. This is the third time we've taken the forums out into the community. We usually do this in a studio where there can't be an audience. And we figured it's better to be out in the various towns, bring topics to the community so that people like you can come out and listen for yourself and ask questions if you like. We have a small group today, which is fine. The important thing is we want to make it available to people. So thanks a lot for coming. And with that, I'm just going to turn things over to our host, Dick Spotswood. Journal, and it's uh, just a pleasure to be here in San Rafael today. We're going to be talking about the Richmond Bridge bikeway, uh, transportation, or folly is the question, and we'll perhaps have different views on that. For years, the San Rafael Richmond Bridge was an underused 5.9 mile link across San Pablo Bay is mostly by Contra Costa commuters going to jobs here in Marin and up in Sonoma. With the rebound of the 1908 Great Recession, uh, year by year, more and more cars have come to use the Richmond San Rafael Bridge. Cars, bucks, buses, and trucks jam it every day in the morning and the afternoon, coming from relatively affordable Contra Costa homes to well-paying Marin and Sonoma jobs. The bridge was so underused that in the 1970s, they put, a bike, they put a pipeline, a water pipeline across the bridge. When the bridge was built in the 50s, it was built with three traffic lanes in each direction. Three uh, westbound on the upper deck, three eastbound on the lower deck. When they put the pipeline in, they took out the extra lane. There was so little traffic that nobody objected. Put the pipeline in and addressed the water problem in and it worked great. Upper deck pipeline, lower deck Caltrans used the space for maintenance. That worked fine and drought's over and the pipeline's removed and Caltrans continued to use the, what was the third lane on each deck for maintenance. Then traffic got worse and worse and worse. The recession was over and things started boom and traffic was horrible. And people said, Lee, gee, we could go back and use that third lane for autos. So Caltrans and the Bay Area Toll Bridge Authority, which is a subsidiary of the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, announced a plan will restore the third lane on the lower deck, the, west, the eastbound lower deck of the Richmond San Rafael Bridge during commute hours, and we will put on the upper deck a bike lane. The bike lane will have a reversible barrier similar to the one used on the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, and it would be used for bikes 24-7 during a four-year pilot program in which they'd see how many people use the bikes. Lots of folks started to object, saying, wait a minute, what are we doing sitting in traffic? Going over, to San, going over to San Rafael and Marin every morning, well, very few people will use the bike lanes. And there lies the dispute, and there lies the question. And in the midst of that, one Metropolitan Transportation Commissioner decided he'd make a proposal. He's one of our guests tonight. Damon Conley is here. Damon, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Marin County Supervisor and a, uh, a MTC Commissioner, and John Wright, a, Metro, uh, a John Marin Wright. County TAM Transportation Authority Commissioner and Mayor of the Town of Fairfax. Yeah. Mayor last year, actually. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, Councilman? Yeah. We have bought, some of us have gone yeah, through Yeah, it goes that. around. I've been mayor a couple of times. <laughs> We've also had an opportunity to invite uh, folks from the Marin County Bicycle Coalition and the Bay Trail. This is part of the Bay Trail. Uh, they both declined. Uh, the Bicycle Coalition indicated to me when I called them that they had not endorsed the proposal but don't oppose it. Very fine point, and I thought I told them I would make that point, but they're not here. So we want to make sure our viewers know there was an offer opportunity for the Bicycle Coalition folks to come. Well, I want to start with you, Damon, if I might. You have uh, surfaced a proposal, which uh, I guess I've said in my column is a compromise. Uh, some don't think so. What is it? So, and first of all, thank you again, uh, Dick, to you and the IJ and to John uh, for allowing me to participate in this forum. It's obviously a key issue, and I think you teed it up well. I mean, there's been virtually an explosion of congestion through the Richmond San Rafael Bridge corridor. Uh, so this uh, journey, if you will, started with me um, a few years ago, focusing on the lower deck, the eastbound direction, which has had tremendous impacts on our uh, towns as the evening commute backs up. Uh, it's only getting worse. Uh, so we we put together a coalition, and that's at, that lane is opening up in April. Will so it be this really April? News. Yes, it will. Next be. month? Yes, yes. So um, yeah. knock yeah, on TAM wood. Or, on that, you know, basically, TAM, uh, Transportation Authority of Marin has been 
very much behind that's the absolutely right. third lane on the on the bridge. That's absolutely right. So, so about um, yeah, no, absolutely, John, which we serve on together. Um, so over about the past year, year and a half, I've been approached by a lot of uh, folks who work in Marin, uh, businesses in Marin, and just uh, everyday residents who have said, hey, what about the westbound direction? Uh, there's a huge backup every morning uh, going over the bridge in that direction. Um, is there something we can do about that? Well, as you noted, uh, Dick, there has been a proposal in place for several years now to actually install a westbound bike and pedestrian lane on the upper deck. Uh, so my proposal is basically, and I raised this at MTC earlier this year, um, as, a, as a relative newcomer to, to MTC, I've been on it about a year. Why don't we take a look at uh, would there be an opportunity because it's a movable barrier uh, like on the Golden Gate Bridge, could we open it up to vehicular traffic during um, AM commute hours and other high intensity times and uh, in that effect uh, share uh, with the bike and ped usage which is going forward on a pilot basis. Um, recently, my colleagues on MTC have uh, uh, agreed to go forward with a study of that, which will look at cost, scope, uh, schedule, uh, what would be required. It's not a, a one thing solution here. Uh, you have to look at the toll plaza. You've got to look at the, the bridge itself and the configuration of the lanes. What would be the traffic impacts on both sides of the bridge with any change? Um, MTC is confident that that can at least be scoped out as part of this $100,000 study uh, that they're undertaking. And that, that was actually a unanimous vote to go forward with that. In the meantime, I cannot tell you how many people I'm hearing from on this issue. Um, uh, teachers, uh, school districts who are saying, you know, I'm barely making it to class in the morning uh, because of the of the traffic on that side of the bridge every morning. Uh, What's the politics of this at MTC? Where's staff coming from? And uh, what about the directors? I understand well, you're the only director from Marin County. Uh, what about the directors from the South Bay? So again, I, I can only judge by the, the vote. Uh, which at least for this uh, step uh, received unanimity. I, look, I think the last thing MTC wants is to implement a not cheap project. Out the door, this is going to be 27 to $28 million, including construction. Uh, the movable barrier itself is about $10 million, and take it from there in terms of how much uh, will be involved in costs in terms of moving it. Uh, et cetera, so not cheap. So um, they want to succeed. Uh, so I think at this point, um, we have a situation where a pilot will go forward. Um, everyone is getting, and particularly I would say the Contra Costa representatives, but also, and the Marin, uh, me, the representative in our, our community, um, gets that we have a severe issue on our hands here. Um, so I think MTC uh, is open to, uh, throughout the region, is open to looking at this. They've raised another issue, which actually has not uh, gotten a lot of attention, okay. but I'll just raise it here and, and maybe it's worth uh, further discussion this evening. That's the issue of safety, uh, because right now you have a situation where there's a shoulder if there's any breakdown yes. um, during high congestion time periods, that uh, vehicle, bus, you know, uh, truck or car can be moved over. That will go away under either plan, when it's a bike lane and or a car lane. Uh, so, they, so MTC is also starting to raise that issue, is what are the implications of losing an, an emergency lane? I had an expert, actually, I consulted with about that, a true expert, myself. I was driving from Richmond to San Rafael last year, I wrote about this in my column, and I got a flat tire on the Richmond-San Rafael Bridge. 
And so I called, I used my iPhone and, and called my 3A app and uh, uh, tow truck. Oh, I called, no, they said we, we call uh, the Bay Area, the, the, the bridge toll. The, the, the toes. Yeah. And the guy came out, very chatty guy. Obviously, I rode in the cab with him as he took me over to the Marin County side. And uh, I said, so what's going to happen when, uh, when, when they do this, if, if this happens like to me? He says, quote, they've got no clue. I don't want to use the term he used, but it's going to be a disaster. Uh, because what will happen is with the bike lane, there will only be two auto lanes left. Uh, well, there must be a solution. I mean, the, the well, other there's bridges... only so much room. I mean, that, that's the thing. I mean, uh, and I commute over that bridge. I've commuted over that bridge for 30 years, I okay. suppose, maybe, maybe longer. I don't know. You know, from Berkeley to Marin and from Marin to Berkeley and, and back and forth. Uh, different places, but um, and yeah, it's the traffic moves with the economy, like all of our roads. You know, the economy goes up and everything get, clogs up, and roads will clog up to the point, you know, where people just don't drive so much, and that's where you hit the limit. Um, and it's interesting. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess Steve Kinsey was in your seat on uh, uh, on the MTC before you. And, uh, you know, I'd like to have a conversation with him to figure out, you know, what the conversation was about there because, um, yeah, it's, it's really clogged in both directions and it needs to be three lanes going east, uh, going west in the morning and east at night because that's when all this traffic, because there's more better paying jobs in Marin and cheaper housing in the East Bay. Um, and interestingly, but, as Dick mentioned, it was originally designed as a three-lane. Yeah, bridge. and well, you think about in 1950, Marin was designed to be a lot denser. You know, West Marin was supposed to be freeways and suburban developments and all. You know, so you know that was kind of how that was geared. So it would have been clogged a lot earlier. But what was interesting um, for me was just about a year ago, I got an electric bicycle. And I thought, ah, oh, this is, you know, it's basically a bicycle, you know, with a little motor on it. And it's such a game chamber changer because all of a sudden you can go up hills like, you know, like they're fast enough so that the breeze can cool you off, which, you know, is good on a bicycle. Um, and so you can go up, and bicycles are always great because, you know, I mean, it's the most efficient uh, vehicle on the face of the earth. I mean, even though cars are twice as efficient as they used to be. This bike is still over three times as efficient as that as a, a you know, an engineering thing. Um, put electric motor on that, it makes a lot of sense. You know, you get the hybrid cars, you know, they get a little bit more efficient, but you're still dragging this huge chunk of metal around. So it's a kind of a game chamber, and I thought, oh, wow, you know, people can park right in front of where they're going to go. You know, I mean, I've, I've been a bicyclist all my life, but, you know, bicycles have limitations, and they're not for everybody. But I figured... This is the kind of thing that's going to be a mode shift. And then I started talking to some people who were also figuring out the electric bike thing. And, you know, in, down in the South Bay where you have jobs on one side and cheaper housing on the other, there's people avoiding the backup. I, you know, I talked to bicyclists who said, well, I can drive my car and get there maybe in half an hour, maybe in two hours and 15 minutes. I don't know. It's very unreliable, but they can get on an electric bike and get there in about 40, 45 minutes reliably every time. So that buys a lot. I mean, there's, you know, it's frustrating to sit in traffic. And so if that kind of time saving for people can drive a mode shift to, you know, basically every one of those is one less car on the bridge. So it's going to decrease traffic. And I think for the same reason that a lot of the bicycle advocacy organizations weren't going to take a position on this. Is this still on? Yeah. Um, you know, for the same reason, I'm like, well, you know, does this really make sense? Um, yeah, I, I don't know about that either, but um, MTC obviously is responding to a bunch of people who are saying, we, you know, we want to see what this like, so there, is like, so they're doing this pilot program for four years. So my thought is, if we're going to take that lane and say during commute hours, you can't ride a bike over the bridge, what is your pilot program testing? 
You know, I mean, you're not going to see if people are going to commute on a bike instead of that and seeing how much it changes. Um, you know, I mean, when they built the Golden Gate Bridge, I'm sure, you know, it wasn't very crowded at first, you know, and gradually people, you know, because there weren't as many cars and things. Um, and this would operate the same way. You would, you would get a change, uh, but it wouldn't be, you know, packed with bicycles the first year, you know, but it would gradually, you know, I've talked anecdotally to a lot of people who say, oh, yeah, I want to try this. And, you know, an electric bike will make it over that bridge easily, and it'd be kind of a nice ride. Um, so, you know, at least I want to try it. You know, I'd probably go yeah. to Berkeley. But what the, the point for me is if we cut off the rush hour time for that access to bicycles, we're really not testing anything. And then I started thinking about this movable barrier. You were saying, Damon, it's really expensive. It's $10, $11 million for the barrier. Then you've got to move it back and forth all the time. The trucks are not cheap at all. They're three quarters of a million dollars, I think, um, each. Um, why not? There, there are all these concrete barriers that you can just drop them down there with a forklift, and they can just stay there right on the line. And you can either run bicycles or cars on either one of those, save a whole lot of money right up front, and basically you're just either letting cars through I think that the, or uh, bicycles uh, and uh, 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 do that on both decks so that when the big commute is in one direction, the bicycles use the other layer. Then when the big commute in the evening is on the other thing, the bicycles are up on top. So that oh, way oh, you oh, get no, your try test this and it's less money. Well, wait, let me get this. Uh, something new. I'm hearing something new. Uh, so you're suggesting have a movable lane? Uh, Not a movable lane. Have a fixed barrier. So the third lane is, bicycle both is, ways. is either bicycles only or it's a third lane of traffic. Oh, I see what you're saying. So that way, you know, and you can, we already have all those concrete barriers. We don't have to buy you know, six or 12 miles of these fancy movable barriers in the trucks to move them. We've already got those. You just drop them down there right on that line. Interesting enough. The, uh, and, they, you know, they, you, get, you get that kind of lane in Portland, Boston, a lot of cities all over the place. And it's a dedicated <laughs> lane, and it's either dedicated to the third lane of traffic that we need to put across that bridge, or in the reverse direction where you don't need that lane, that's when the bicycles are able to use that during... Yeah the commute hours, so you get a realistic uh, pilot program. Now, it's always easy to poke holes in ideas. And it's hard to come up with good ideas. So I, I've done that because I've had a lot of silly ideas in my life. I can tell you about a test we did on the Golden Gate okay. Bridge someday, which ended after two hours, and I proposed it. Um, you got a lane with a non-movable barrier. Right. You got a car in it, mm -hmm. right? It's my car, the one that I drove and across that got a flat tire. tire. What do I do? That's a problem. I mean, but that's going to be a problem either way. And, and as you quoted the uh, tow truck driver, I mean, I, th I think that's going to be a problem just about with anybody. You know? Why not? Which well, is why Caltrans <coughs> wants nobody except that just, they call it a breakdown lane. The, the, but the, we need the lane for traffic. I mean, there's, there's more people trying to cross that bridge than... Are we can't. dealing with a philosophical question here or a practical question? To me, there's, there's a, there, I hear a lot of people write to me and say, when I write, write stuff, it makes them angry. But it sounds like that they're coming from the point of view that they truly believe in their heart that if we build it, they will come. And any numbers or hard data is not the deal. It's going to happen. Trust us. And the old-fashioned person says, let's do a study, find out how many people are going to use it, and make it based on a hard, crunching kind of number stuff. Uh, I don't know, David, is this philosophical or is this uh, practical? Well, and, and you know, Dick, I've always made it clear this is not a uh, exercise in pitting single occupancy vehicle drivers versus bikers. Um, we're facing a transportation crisis that's going to uh, require a lot of different solutions. So what I'm envisioning is um, what do we need to do to improve transit through this corridor? Um, can we incentivize carpools? Um, I think there are those who, um, by virtue of uh, 
uh, what they're doing in terms of their jobs, um, whether it be a teacher with a ton of books, um, someone who utilizes tools, uh, where they're not going to be able to probably hop on that bike uh, and, and make the trip uh, over. Um, electric bikes are intriguing. Um, and again, I think it's important to remember that um, while to some extent it's, it's unfortunate that we do not have data now, um, which we somewhat do. I, I will mm -hmm. say that um, you know, about 80,000 car trips occur on this bridge every day. As was noted, it's about 5.5 miles. The Dumbarton Bridge in the South Bay also has about 80,000 car trips and an existing bike lane. Um, it, it traverses two fairly well-populated areas. Um, there's about 235 bike trips a day on that. So I think we, you know, and that's 1.6 miles. Does that give us... Well, that's just the bridge part, right? Right. I mean, there's does, a huge long approach, so... Right. Does they, that... They are actually comparable in size. And, right, so, and that's that, not a lot of... That's not a lot of bikes. D you know, so... And, but... That having been said, can you analogize that? Maybe it gives you a baseline. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's other factors here. Well, I think um, to some extent, you know, perhaps a, a, a pilot in some way. I think four years is a long time. It I'll could be. I mean, I'm just going, I mean, I didn't pick four years. Right. MTC picked four years for some reason. And, and I really don't know the politics behind it or the reasoning. Uh, but if they're trying to test whether they can open a, open a bike lane so that bike, people can commute, I mean, the, the, an objective is to get a contiguous network of bike lanes around the bay, and getting across the bridge is a huge thing. I mean, they put a bike lane halfway across the bridge in between Oakland and San Francisco, and they thought nobody would use it, but tons of people are using it because they like to be on the bridge and it doesn't even go all the way to San Francisco. It just goes to Treasure Island. They go there and, and go back as a... Well, and again, you know, a lot of people I mean, use the so Golden Gate Bridge yeah, as well. Yeah. So and and that it, surprised it's really a kind lot of, of what's cost effective, what, what is actually going to get people out of well, their Well, I, I guess my point <laughs> is if you're thinking about doing this test for whatever reason that... I mean, I don't know the reasoning behind the test, but if you're thinking about doing the test, why not do the test so that you're actually testing something? You're not testing whether somebody's going to ride it on the weekend, which is kind of beside the point, really. I mean, what you want to test is see how many people are going to start commuting if they have the opportunity to do so. And from where I sit, I'm, I kind of like you, Dick, and it's like, well, let's do something practical and relatively inexpensive to see if it works. Let's not just throw tons of money at it because I think that's, I mean, I hear lots of people objecting to how much it costs and frankly, I object to the same thing. So these movable barriers are really expensive. The barriers, they already exist. You New just Jer they call them New Jersey barriers. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever they call That's what they call New Jersey barriers. Maternity, transit. whatever they're called. They're just chunks of concrete and yeah. they've got millions of them. Just bring them and plunk them down. You've already got them. It's going to be really cheap. Just drop them there on the bridge, and then you've already got your separated lanes. Do it on both decks, and then you can run all the cars, you know, cars on all three lanes in the heavy peak direction, and then keep your pilot program going on the other deck. Well, if you, if you during rush hour, because if, if you could do that, yeah, you'd have yeah. your cake and eat it too. Well, you can have your cake and eat it too for you know, a good. quarter the cost of the cake. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, why spend all this money on this movable barrier when you can just do it on they, the cheap? Yeah, yeah so uh, it's an intriguing idea. You know, I mean, and, and I, we I, talked about it before. I, 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 I think I'm we eager for you to bring that back up to MTC because really, it, you know, unless they've already made this movable barrier and ordered it up and paid their $11 million, I mean, I think you can use the already existing concrete ones. I mean, well, just... I mean, I, I think the same issues would have to be looked at. I mean, uh, just well, yeah. ball, ballpark, I think it would mm -hmm. probably double the cost. I mean, because you have two, two levels. And remember, it's not only the bridge itself. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the approaches. It's well, when you're on the other and that, side. That's what like, we discovered on right. the Transportation so, Authority is, is... I think it... 
we just wanted to open the third lane and Caltrans was like, well, no, there's all the approaches and we got to move the retaining wall over in Richmond, which is the biggest ticket item. And then all the approaches and stuff, which is really a car problem, right? I mean, bicycles can turn on a radius of, you know, 10 feet or something like that. They'll still have to they'll provide be able to the get same. On that. Well, that, that's not the expensive. Yeah. There actually may be a, a problem which is broader than the bridge. Mm -hmm. We've made it, everything we've made so expensive to do and so time consuming to do that we can't, it's hard to experiment. I mean, I've had problems with certain aspects of SMART, for instance, where is there not a cheaper way to do this? And sometimes there is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just, it, 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 it's, it's, there's an institutional resistance to doing stuff like we used sure. to do it. And God knows if, how long will the AR take? I mean, that's a good two years on anything when you would do it. Yeah. Damon, I want to ask you a question just on this $100,000 uh, study they're going to do, which right. I appreciate they've approved, and that's great. Why not ask in the study, do a forecast of how many folks are going to use it? I know when we looked at the Cal, uh, Cal Park Tunnel between San Rafael mm -hmm. and Green Bay, a study was done. I have on my desk the study that was done on the potential Mill Valley Cordobadera Tunnel. They've got a forecast that's really broken down quite nicely. You can yeah. agree or disagree with it, but it's, but it's hard numbers you can get your teeth in. Why not include in the study a forecasting mechanism? Let's find out how many people we're talking about. Why not do that? I think they are going to do that. Um, are you talking about it bike should. usage yes. alone? Yes, or? bike using, using the, the, the uh, if yeah. they go forward with the pilot program. Presume there's no change. Right. What's the, the forecast of use? And I'm just curious of that number, and I, I've asked that them. That number does it's, not it's, exist, right? Yeah, and it's a hard one to, because you don't know. I mean, it's. But we did it on the Cal Park Hill Tunnel, and we did it on the. On, yeah, on but the, I mean, it, yeah, that's one particular segment, and we're talking about little segments around. Um, probably people didn't know how many people would use the Golden Gate Bridge before they built it. And. Who knows? I asked but the, uh, in hindsight, I'm sure you can say, oh, yeah, you know, it, it's a godsend to, you know, people driving cars back and forth to San Francisco. What we have right here is something, it's, it's an unknown. There, there's all these little tiny pieces of bike lanes. They're finally, what they're trying to do is get a contiguous network. And people wouldn't drive a car somewhere if the road only went halfway there and says, oh, you get there, you know, oh, and then for this 100-foot section, well, that was too expensive, so we decided not to build a road over that particular bridge or whatever it was. It just wouldn't work. You have to have the whole network there. Once you do, people will start using it. I told... Uh, so that's why that study, it's, it's hard to know, but that's, so here's why another, that's why the pilot program... Here's is. another little data point. Okay. Okay. And this was from, uh, so... MTC did something called the Richmond Centerfell Bridge Access Improvements Project before study evaluation and report. Oh, really? And it was published in September 2017. So this was before the actual yes. uh, work on even the East Bank. What does it say? So basically what it says, and again, this is not apples to apples. I mean, you know, we're, I think we're hearing what you're saying, John, in terms of to some extent, you know, does anyone have a crystal ball about who actually is going to hop on that electric bike and go over? That having been said, um, it showed that during 2016, so there is actually a bus that goes yeah, yeah. between San Rafael and Richmond Most right now. Most people don't know this. I mean, yeah. explain it, what it is. It's a free, it's a yes. free bus? It, it's a, uh, no, it's a, a Golden Gate Transit bus. Um, uh, oh. Actually runs quite frequently 24 times a day oh, with, yeah. with particular emphasis on AM and PM peak commute times. Right. Um, so you can hop on it with your bike. Um, you get it, like, stuck in traffic with it. Like Everybody everyone, knows. you know, all buses now have. Um, and in 2016, the average daily number of bikes on bus uh, was 30 per day across that span. There's also, I believe, a Caltrans uh, truck shuttle that is free, I think, isn't there? Uh, yeah, you know, I've talked also with bicyclists trying to use that thing yeah, I don't and they've waited up to two hours really? to get on it yeah. and I've also talked to bicyclists using this I'm not shuttle. saying it's apples to apples yeah it's not and in fact it goes from I think it's El Cerrito Bart or Richmond Bart to 
the Bettini Transit. Center. I've used it myself with right. my bike. Right. And um, is is that where it, it does. goes? Yeah. yeah. So it's not like you ride your bike to the bridge and then you take the shuttle over the bridge and then you ride your bike. It's pretty convenient. Which has been requested by people, but they're trying to get to the smart train. And the bus is stuck in traffic. And the bus won't let them off of the bus so they can ride their bike to make the train. And they miss two train. I mean, they, they miss the train, then they mix the next train after that because the bus is still stuck in traffic and it won't let them off the bus. And I mean, the, 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 the people telling me this, you know, that you could tell that they were, the steam was coming out of the ears because th they knew that they could just ride their bike along the side and pass all the stop traffic and get, make it to the train that they were trying to make. And, uh, you know, so it's a three hour delay by the time they get the third smart train that they're, you know, let me go it, back it's frustrating, to, you know, it's, it, it's, it's hard to. Well, let, let me just go back to the, to the, to the pilot program. Mm -hmm. uh, if it lasts a week or four weeks or four years, initially you're gonna have something in the morning commute, I think there's 80,000 a day across the Richmond Center of Fell Bridge, but, but that's all day. So the, I think the commute's probably in the 15 to 20 range, something in that area. Just to pick a number, yeah. Which is quite a few people when you're talking about 15 to 20,000 people. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, and of course it affects the freeways from Wren, it backs up, et cetera. Damon, what do you tell the constituent that calls you up or the Contra Costa County person that works in a Marin County job that first month of the, of the, uh, of the bike lane uh, and they're stuck there on that bridge, not happy, and they see three bikes go by them? What, what's, what's the answer to that? To both you guys. I think the answer is to put the bikes on the other deck and well, have the three, three but, but, lanes. But take that aside for yeah. a second if, before you do. And that does solve that problem. Well, yeah. I mean, personally, I'm, I mean, I think MTC's plan, yeah, I call it a pilot program or whatever, is deeply flawed. I mean, they're using a really expensive barrier and they're, they're ignoring these thousands and thousands of motors that are backed up in traffic. It's, it's just, it's, it's a setup. You know, it's a setup for failure. Dick, I, I really I'm, think it is. I'm hearing from cyclists who have grave concerns about this for that very reason. Um, are we using our transportation resources in the most cost-effective manner? Um, is it even the most cost-effective uh, effective way to get people out of their cars in that corridor? Um, in the meantime, you have uh, projects here, even in Marin, uh, that that would be highly effective that are are clamoring for funding. But it's uh, the North South Greenway. The North South Greenway, uh, which which we all know and love. Um, so, I think uh, I think it creates a lot of frustration. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I've heard the same exact things, and I've as from the. First moment I've heard about MTC's plan for you know doing this is like, well, why do that? You know, it's it's kind of a setup, and then seeing like, oh, well, with a movable barrier, you know, eleven million dollars for that, that seems even more of a setup. They must want the barrier for something else, and it's probably to move it out of the way so that traffic can use it during commute hours or something like that. Which, is, you know, why bother to have the barrier in the, in you know if if why spend all that money and go through all that motion, just say you're testing letting bikes go across and then not make it practical. I mean, it, it just seems stupid to me and a waste of money. And so I start scratching my head and say, well, what must they be trying to test? You know, I mean, is, is it that we can get mode shift? I mean, until I got that electric bike, I didn't think that there was any possibility for a significant mode shift, but having the experience of riding an electric bike and realizing, oh, I could get across that bridge efficiently and rapidly without, I mean, it's a big long hill too, and it gets windy, and an electric bike can deal with those sorts of problems. So that might be a game changer. So regardless of whether it's a setup or not, I mean, it feels like that why not as cheaply as possible see if you can achieve the objectives of the pilot program with fixed barriers on both decks so that you can solve a, a very pressing problem, which is all these commuters that need to go across that bridge 
in both directions. Fortunately, the morning commute is in one direction, the evening commute is backed up in the other direction. So that leaves one lane which you could do this pilot program. And I, I, I think that makes all the sense in the world. You could, you know, I think you could do it a lot cheaply than what they're planning on spending. And, um, and then you'd be able to see if there is a mode shift because it's still, you know, frankly, the bridge isn't the only thing that's clogged up, you know. Uh, there's traffic all over the place. People are, you know, Sir Francis Drake, it's the same deal, you know, and, and Anybody who's written an electric bike knows like, oh, I can efficiently get there and, um, you know, and I'm outside and it, it, it feels good to be outside breathing fresh air well, instead of sitting in traffic. Let me ask you a bigger picture question on the same route, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking bike versus uh, autos. If you... Well, it shouldn't be versus, but yeah. But, but a bike and autos. Yeah. But of course, the thing that always had frustrated me, and maybe you guys have a better idea than, than I did, but the thing that frustrates me is I've not seen a viable public transit option for this corridor. I, I can tell you, Damon, I, that bus that went over to, uh, I, I was involved years ago in the creation of that bus route to the Richmond BART station. And it's great that we have it, but it's not carrying a heck of a lot of people from a point of view of, uh, of uh, what do you call it, a percentage of people taking a, a corridor. Yet, everything you ask about that corridor is very difficult because you're not going to one concentrated downtown and you're not coming from a concentrated downtown, you're coming from the classic dispersal model, people all over Contra Costa, and they work all over the North Bay. So transit becomes tough, the well, ferry boat becomes tough, because uh, we don't have a harbor close to where they, uh, where they wanna yeah. go. Well, I, I think that's the whole problem with public transportation in America. I mean, America is spread out all over the place. I mean, the, the automobile, because of its, I mean, it suits the American spirit independent, like I want to go where I want to go and I don't want to, you know, just go with everybody else on a train and then, you know, it works great in New York City, you know. Because it's, but there they're going to a central location. Right, they're all in a central location there. And San Francisco works pretty yeah. well, transits, bar, bar yeah. capacity. Yeah, that Is works that pretty well there. But in general, in America, it's spread out and the car no services question. that pretty well. Well, guess what also does that? Bike is an independent vehicle that each individual steers it right where they want to go. And generally they park right outside the door of where they want to go. And I mean, I'd, when I was helping to get Safe Bruce's school started, you know, people were like, what are you riding a bike to school for? You know, it, 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 cars are so much faster. And they're sitting in traffic getting there. It says, well, you know, how long, you know, it's, you're complaining because it took you 15 minutes and it took me five to ride my bike and I'm right there at the door, I don't have to find a place to park. I have to pay Damon a compliment because like I've often been critical of our supervisors, all of whom always stole the bike, but don't seem to be on it as much as they might be. And well, once they get a year, a parking place right in front of Once a year, Damon uh, 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 gives up the car mm -hmm. and, and tell us Good. what you do. So thank you for that opportunity. And, <laughs> and no, I think Marin can be proud of, we, we have done a lot of pioneering in oh, terms of yeah, safe the non-motorized pilot yeah. programs, safe routes mm -hmm. to schools. I heard the statistic recently that now 50% of student yeah. trips are now yeah, it's green, really significant. which and is huge. So hashtag ride with Damon. Every year, uh, this do other be, people do this, do they ride? Yeah, so, this is my third year. For 30 days straight, I don't drive a car. Good. Uh, so no single occupancy vehicle trips, meaning bike, transit, and the occasional carpool. And my uh, instruction to my staff is don't change my schedule. So as a supervisor, not only are we all over Marin County, uh, we're in the East Bay and uh, Sonoma County, Napa, and San Francisco. I will say uh, my bike commute to work is only about 15 minutes. So that uh, it's great to utilize that. Gonna be doing this again. Um, it will culminate on uh, International Ride to Work Day. I think it's about May 11th or 12th. Uh, so I'll be starting that up uh, soon. Uh, not a moment too soon, I might add, with the waistline, yeah. But David, I'm going to, uh, I was out at, uh, did a the fire forum at uh, Point Ray Station last week, uh, Wildland Fire, and I met the folks from the uh, Rotary Club of West Marin. 
I'm going to mention to them that uh, you are on that, uh, I'll go anywhere on a bike, and I'm going to have them invite you to speak to the Rotary Club of West Marin and Point Reyes Station, and that's going to be a heck of a ride. So there's a lot of excitement. So where I, well, think I heard you say a carpool, though, too, so that's could be a, a way out Maybe of that. once, no, yeah. once or White twice. Hill. You okay. bring it on. I'm right. All right. It's, it's hashtag ride Good with Damon. You. People can send in photographs of themselves doing it. And it's really an opportunity to see what is and isn't working. And again, I'm really drilling down into that cost effectiveness. I mean, we have a, a, a great proposal now for the multi-use path through central San Rafael, which is a gap in yes. the north-south greenway. A ton of people would use that. And we've got to find the funding for that. This is the frustration I have. I'm not against bicycle use. I, I think it's a great concept. And I agree with, agree with John. I just like to get bang for the buck. And instead of spending $25 million to go across the Richmond San Rafael Bridge for what I think is going to be a very small number of people, finishing the Green, San Rafael and, 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 and the Larkspur Ferry, obviously people are going to use that. Recreation, commuters, whatever. It just, it's in the midst yeah. of, a, of, of, it makes sense. I, and it's cheap. I agree. I agree. But we can um, find the money for the big stuff. We got the right well, away. Yeah, well, good luck trying to get MTC to take the money from there oh, and yeah. bring it over here. For our... That's where the public gets frustrated, though. The well, money's there, but it's not being used so. as, you know. Yeah, understandably so. And, and I agree with that. And, and I guess where I, when I came into this conversation here, I said, well, okay, take it as a given. You know, they're not giving up on their four year pilot program. Um, Let's try to make that pilot program work. Although they could, my, I think the, the point is to, to go forthwith with the study that I've, I've asked for as well. The yeah, pilot but, but, will start, but I, I, it's not like, yeah, you well, know, they're going to have to Regardless, I mean, in order to even years. just to start that pilot program, you know, it, it costs you $11 million, and, which is a lot of money. And, I mean, you could do a lot of other stuff with that same money, or you could spend... I don't know what it is. I mean, use some pre-existing concrete barriers and plunk them down there on that line without spending all that money on the movable barrier and the trucks to run it. I'm going to ask if we have any questions you know, from the audience. But yeah, before you, we, we do, should, if you but, come up, uh, come on up to the podium. Yeah. Uh, Damon, I do, I do have a question, a very basic one. When, when are they planning to finish the upper deck? I know they said this April for the lower deck, but what's, what's, what's the timeline for, for the upper deck being finished with the bike lane? Probably by early 2019. Okay. So not, not that far in the future. Great. Yeah. Got a like question a here? from now or something. Uh, please state your name and your hometown. Yeah, my name is Tony Coyle. I live in Mill Valley. And um, a couple of years ago, I was lucky enough to be a student at UC Cal and I was commuting across the bridge in the morning and coming back in the afternoon. The traffic was backed up for as much as three miles coming into Marin in the morning. And in the afternoon, <laughs> you couldn't see where the traffic ended because it went up over the hill and everything else. Now, in 1972, when we put the pipe on the bridge, 1973, it took three weeks to put that pipe in and get the water flowing across the bridge. And uh, we didn't let cars go in that lane. Now, we took the pipe away. We didn't put the cars back again. And now we have been arguing for the last seven or eight years as to what on earth we're going to do with that bridge. Mr. Connolly, yours has been the voice of sanity to some extent from the Metropolitan Group. The amount of money we have spent on studies is absolutely obscene. Every time somebody opens their mouth and says, oh, do we need some paint there? Oh, that's a $100,000 study. It, it's, it's, there is absolutely, that I can see, no reason why three lanes at this time can't be put in each direction so that the cars at least can uh, go at a better speed during the time we are still talking about what to do with the bicycles. We can also get the bicycle trucks that somebody has uh, suggested and uh, bring the bicycles from one side to the other so that both groups are, are 
uh, somewhat mollified by the whole thing. But right now, it is absolutely disgraceful, and nothing is happening except we're spending obscene amounts of money to do nothing. What is the answer? Comments. Damon and John. Tony, it is frustrating. And, and believe me, we're, we're hearing that loud and clear. Um, well, I, for example, in the eastbound direction, um, literally it took you know us locally, it took our state legislators to make it happen. The explanation for what it's worth as to why it took uh, time to complete, because you're right, the natural inclination is, hey, it was a, a three-lane bridge to begin with. We had the experience with the, uh, the water uh, flowing over. Um, why can't you just pull out paint and get it done? Well, as you probably have seen, um, particularly on the east side of the bridge, it did end up involving a lot more. They essentially had to move a whole hill back uh, sufficiently to actually create the, uh, the headway for the lane. Um, so on the westbound direction, um, I think you raised some valid points. Um, I don't anticipate this study taking that long. I'm told, for what it's worth, about four months, maybe five. Um, again, it's, it's not one single thing. They're going to look at the toll plaza, for example. It's still, you can pay cash at that toll plaza. Um, it seems like an easy step might be to make it electronic. Um, what are the line, lane configurations? And importantly, um, if we open up the flow, what will be the traffic impacts on the Marin side as well? It's worth taking a look at. It is worth taking a look at, but now you're introducing more studies. We're going to it's study. All part, it's all part yeah. of the same one. Okay, well, why don't we have cars running over there while we're studying? Get the cars well, moving. Get the traffic moving. Study us while they're moving. Well, I, I asked. Now we don't. Yeah, on the Transportation Authority, I mean, we were at asking for exactly, we were saying exactly the same words that you're saying now. And I think what, what Damon was saying to you was like, well, we found out that basically they would get three lanes across the bridge and then they'd run into a spot where it's only two lanes wide. And Caltrans is, you know, the 800 pound gorilla in the room, it's bigger than any of our Bay Area agencies or whatever. And they're saying, no, you can't do it because they didn't want bumper to bumper traffic, three lanes wide on the bridge, bottled up, you're just moving the bottleneck to the place where the hill needs to be moved back. Now we've moved the hill back, so there's no reason not to put the three lanes. But what the re I think that the reasons why they didn't want that, they, they have a number of them, but probably the main one is if you get that much traffic sitting on that bridge all the time, it's pretty heavy. What if you get an earthquake? And, you know, you're, you're, it's not going to move faster because it's already got a bottleneck. To make the uh, speaker more frustrated. Well, I, 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 I'm going to make you more frustrated. All right, beg your pardon. Go ahead. If you really go out there, I've been going out to that toll plaza since this thing started. I've gone with Kinsey, uh, the whole deal. The move on the hill, honestly, had nothing to do with opening it for traffic. There's four lanes out there right now with the hills. There were four lanes before. It's a very wide part of the freeway. It's to build a, a, a legitimate bike lane there. If you people forget that there was a bikeway, yeah. Out there, you remember, you can go see it today. Tomorrow morning, you go out there, and you're going to see yeah. a sign saying bikes. There was less than one on average of one person a week using it as a bike. Because it doesn't go the anywhere. The freeway. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't, well, it goes to the top. That's right. But, yeah. but, but exi from a physical I, point of view, it exists. The, the moving back of the hill is probably in the, I'm guessing, 25 to $35 million. It's a giant engineering task. I seriously doubt, I doubt period, that you would have needed to spend that money to open up the three lanes and the bridge. The, the, the big game is, is that money in the bicycle category or is it in the highway category? We have this in other parts of transportation, grade crossings, are they highway or are they railroad? And in this case, the money at MTC is moved to the highway side. Oh, it's all to the highways. My belief is 
It's all due to the bikes, and it ought to be on the bike side. But then people would say, my God, you're spending that money for the bikes, and they go crazy. Uh, uh, next question, do we have another question here? Well, let me say one thing. One that thing. Okay. By, by what you're telling me now is, okay, lads, let's wait another seven years. Oh, I think you and can let's do, do some more yeah. studies and pour more money into $100,000 to find no, out I, if snails go over the bridge. Or, or I mean, I, I'm a big believer in, yeah, just do it as cheap as you can and see what happens. But one of the things that, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a different thing, but the, the, when you don't do any studies, that's basically, you're seeing what happens, that's the study, and then you, you get, a, you know, the, the, I can't say it on television, but the word for when it goes awry for everybody. Um, but uh, it, that's why you have a study, so you don't get people all clubbing, and well, they opened the third lane, why didn't they, why is the highway still two lanes on 580 after where the bridge comes out? I mean, because it is two lanes all the way to downtown Centerville. Next question. Evening. My We're going to stay on it. My name's Terry Bunton, and I live in Mill Valley. Um, I have a number of questions I would like to ask you, and I'm not sure we can do them in the time, well, just but I'm going to start. You have all been around Marin a long time, as have I. In fact, I rode the, drove the San Rafael Bridge for 27 years. I know it very well. I think I must own a piece of it, seeing that I paid so much toll money. But nevertheless, I cannot see any reason why we can't have a proper period of test for the bridge. As John Reed points out, if you don't allow the cyclists to ride across it during commute hours, then you're not going to have any commuters ride the bridge. It's that simple. You don't need to send, spend a lot of money and study, well, how many will there be here and how many will there be there? you know they will come. And why will they come? They will become be because it's inexpensive. With an e-bike, that's a great help with an e-bike, but you can do it on a regular bike too. It's not that difficult to ride. It's, a, it's eight miles of, uh, it's a five miles of road with a couple of hills on it. I'm 85 years old, and I could do that with no trouble at all. In fact, I sent all of you, I believe, an email suggesting an event rather than a thousand, uh, hundred thousand dollar study, to have an event and ride across the bridge and see how it works. It would work perfectly well, and you'll get lots of people who will do it. And now we've got the e-bikes, you'll have lots of commuters who will do it. You will all remember, not so long ago, people were talking about smart. And there were the naysayers that saying, oh, smart's a big boondoggle. We're spending millions and millions of dollars, and there's going to be a couple of hundred people a day riding on smart. Well, smart is working. We eventually got it. We could have had it 10 years earlier, and it would have been half the price, but we couldn't get enough votes. But now smart is working, and the riders are coming, and they're going to continue to come. Because think again back to the, to the ferry at Larkspur. When the ferry started, and I was driving past that terminal there when that was being built, and when the ferries came, people, the naysayers, were saying, oh, no one's going to get in a boat and ride all the way over to San Francisco. It's, not, it's too far, and it's going to be rough, and they're going to be seasick, and all sorts of stories were going around. But eventually, we got the ferries running. And now, instead of just a few hundred people, as it was predicted would be, oh, there will be a few hundred people a day will ever cross a the bay on a ferry boat, now you can't even get in the parking lot. It's jammed solid, and there's ferry people going back and forth all the time. Well, I think you're going to have your test. I mean, basically, as, as has been discussed throughout this evening, the, the pilot's going forward. Yes, um, but if the pilot doesn't allow for commuters, which your program d doesn't, then you're not going to have a test. Well, I, there are going to be no commuters because they won't be able to commute. No, the bike lane is opening. It, it's not. But you're only saying on weekends. No, that, I what, I, that, what I, I I'm asking, let's be clear, what I'm asking for is I want to look at, um, as soon as practicable, looking at converting the lane to vehicular traffic during uh, commute times, namely the morning, 
And yes, if, there, if there's not um, data through usage to justify um, having the bike lane open even every day, let's, and it's primarily being used on weekends, if even that, uh, I suspect it could be, then let's look at doing that. Damon, we're going to have to cut it off because we're, this is an hour program, and we started on time, and that just turned out the window. Did you hear that sound? I did. It was the Smart Harm. We're at the Marine Clean Energy offices here on the tracks of Smart, and the train is leaving right now for Santa Rosa. Damon Conley, Supervisor, MTC Commissioner, thank you for coming. John Reed, Councilman Fairfax, Metropolitan Tra uh, Marin Transportation Authority of Marin, TAM Commissioner, thank you for coming. Uh, bicycles across the bridge, commuter remedy or folly, we'll all find out together. Yeah. Thanks for coming. It's a pleasure. I'm Dick Spotswood, politics and government columnist for the Marin Independent Journal. Thank you for joining IJ Forum tonight.